Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Although Tesla don't give out too much information, there are lots of subtle inferences that can be used to facilitate reading between the lines. So let's examine the claim that Tesla expect to produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2022, and this is just in-house themselves, then also expect another 100 gigawatt hours from their suppliers, giving a total of 200 gigawatt hours of batteries for 2022. Given that Elon continually claims that Tesla are battery constrained, then let's work out how much revenue and gross profit Tesla might make in 2022, assuming every battery is utilized, and see if we can also work out how many vehicles they sell in 2022. Let's use 70 kilowatt hours as the average battery size for a Tesla. Although Model 3 standard range is only 54 kilowatt hours, I think next year Model Y will outsell Model 3, even though Model Y is really only available for long range, it just sells that well. And Model Y uses a 75 kilowatt hour battery. And yes, we should be expecting perhaps 120,000 Model S and X sales with much larger batteries next year, but I believe we could see over 2 million total sales. So these models wouldn't increase the overall battery size significantly. In addition to that, we may possibly see a few Model 2s roll off the production line as well, which might have significantly lower battery sizes. However, we will likely also start seeing the semi-truck come out. Elon says this takes about four times as so many batteries as a car, and it's rumored to have up to 500 kilowatt hour battery pack, which would significantly increase the average. But I can't imagine too many of these getting sold next year, enough to raise the average overly. Similar story to the Roadster. Of course, we have the Cybertruck out too, which will likely have a larger size battery pack. Rather than trying to estimate how many cars each factory will produce, we can use a much more simple method with some math, which would mean that we divide 70 kilowatt hours into 200 gigawatt hours, giving us a total of around 2.8 million vehicles. But the batteries are not just used for cars. We have power walls and energy storage as well. So if Tesla have 200 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2022, that should be ample for them to start to seriously allocate some for energy storage. So it looks like we have a lot of variables here, so perhaps it'd be prudent to present them on a spreadsheet to further analyze. So a Powerwall requires 14 and a half kilowatt hours of batteries, and they sell for $10,500 before any tax incentives. I've opted for 200,000 Powerwalls. Back in April 2020, Tesla sold their 100,000th Powerwall. So with battery supply increasing, I don't think this is unreasonable. That would give a total revenue of $2.1 billion for Powerwalls. But even at 200,000 Powerwalls, it still barely makes a dent in the 200 gigawatt hours, at a total of around 3 gigawatt hours. The new Texas Megapack announced sounds like it will be around 100 megawatt hours in size. So it makes sense for easy math to keep it at that number. And let's say Tesla sell 200 Megapacks at an average of 100 megawatt hours in 2022. This does sound like a huge number, but Tesla have a massive target to meet, much larger than this. So they have to start somewhere. Going by the price of the South Australian battery, $50 million should be about right. However, I do not believe it will actually be in their business model to simply sell the batteries. I think it would be much more likely for Tesla to maintain control over the batteries themselves to incorporate with their auto bedded software, which would be substantially more profitable. But just for easy numbers and instant cash flow, let's stick with this business model for now. Now, although 200 mega packs might sound like a lot, it's still only going to consume 10% of their overall battery supply. I thought 200 sounded like a lot, but even if it's twice as much, that would still only take 20% of the 200 gigawatt hours. Either way, it looks like the lion's share of the batteries will be for the vehicles. I've left 175 gigawatt hours for vehicles. As I mentioned, we have a 70 kilowatt hour average. This would equate to exactly two and a half million cars. I've gone with an average of $50,000 price per car. I think the Semi, Roadster, X and S, Model Y and Cybertruck will actually raise this price to more like 55,000 or possibly even 60,000, but let's run with 50,000 for now. So Powerwalls are just over $2 billion of revenue, and I've given them a 30% margin. The Powerwalls use nickel and manganese 4680 batteries. I think they should cost under $100 a kilowatt hour at the cell level, but let's say $100. And they are 14 and a half kilowatt hours, which comes to just 1,450 cost of batteries. So the Powerwall margins might be much higher than 30%, but 30% is still pretty good anyway. That takes the Powerwall gross profit to just over $600 million, with $700 revenue per kilowatt hour and $210 profit per kilowatt hour. 
Again, I'm just sticking with 30% margin for the Mega Packs 2. And with $10 billion revenue, that comes out at $3 billion gross profit. With revenue per kilowatt hour at $500, which makes sense to have a lower profit per kilowatt hour as they'll be using the iron cathode batteries, which cost significantly less to manufacture due to iron being so much cheaper than nickel. And then $150 per kilowatt hour gross profit. I would say these mega packs require a lot less engineering and simplicity in manufacturing than making cars. So Tesla might just pump out as many of these as they can if they have the batteries spare. Then we have vehicles with an average of $50,000 each and two and a half million. It would equate to $125 billion in revenue. I think Tesla are already close to margins of 30% now. So I feel confident they would have easily achieved this by 2022. Not to mention how much better FSD would be at this stage, implying more people would be purchasing it and at a higher cost too. So this 50,000 figure does sound very conservative to me, as is the 30% margin. For example, if Tesla have achieved level five autonomy, perhaps the price for FSD will be 20 or $30,000, and maybe one third or one half of owners would purchase it then. Although quite possibly, a lot of users will be using the subscription model too. Either way, I feel we're on the conservative side. So that would equate to a substantial $37.5 billion of gross profit, or $714 revenue per kilowatt hour and $214 gross profit per kilowatt hour. I've used the same pricing of the Powerwalls for solar as you can't have a Powerwall without Tesla Solar as the costs are similar for both. However, the solar tiles will cost more and of course you can order solar without a Powerwall. The number could quite easily be 5 billion, but I've placed 3 billion and I think 30% is probably about what Tesla are aiming for for all their products. This will require them stepping up their game though. In Q4, Tesla was at an annual run rate of $2.7 billion for services and other. So I've put $10 billion in here, which may be on the low side, as there will be more cars running out of warranty by this stage, and there would have been a lot more cars on the road with more charging stations. So all combined, that gives a total revenue figure of $150 billion, with gross profit of $45 billion. There will likely be regulatory credits here as well, but I don't think they are going to be required for Tesla to make any net profits at this stage. But feel free to add an extra two billion in there for good measure, if you like. In 2020, Tesla's revenue was 31.5 billion and gross profit of 6.6 .6 billion. So this is a substantial increase, about five times revenue and seven times profit. In the next video, we'll go through Tesla's costs to calculate their net profits and see if we can work out what the stock price might reach in 2022. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.